Thank you to everyone. Who I want to say thank you to everyone who has joined us this evening. My name is Shalonda Graham. I am a family engagement facilitator. And on the call, I do have Chief Wright Williams with me. We have our presenters this evening. We have two other family engagement uh, facilitators. Can you introduce yourselves at this time? Good evening, my name is Liberta Crouch. I am the family engagement facilitator for the Nottingham Quadrant. I also work with families and um, schools at ITC, McCarthy, Oasis, and Promising Future Leadership Academy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Lisa Wade, I'm the family um, engagement facilitator on the South Side or the Corporate Quadrant, and I work with all the families in, um, that have children in those school buildings. <laughs> Thank you very much. On this evening, I want to welcome you to uh, Getting Ready for High Schools with CTE. Our first presenter on this evening will be Sin Sue Centaur. And we ask that you just mute your microphones, um, hold all of your questions um, in the chat area. And we do ask that if at the end, um, we haven't addressed it, if you can raise your hand or just alert us by um, raising your hand so that way we can get to everyone at the end. Um, and at this time, I wanna turn it over to Sue. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, um, the director, CTE director, Bruno Primerano is here. So I want him to introduce himself, if you can. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, thank you to the Office of Parent Engagement for facilitating this meeting with our families, our middle school families. Um, we're all we are all excited um, to already start thinking about the 22-23 school year. I know that we're just starting our 21-22 school year, but we have a lot of excitement and a lot of potential offerings for our scholars in our middle schools and especially our eighth graders rising up to ninth grade for the 22-23 school year. Um, and we have a lot of information that we'd like to share. We want to make sure that our families and our kids have the appropriate information to make prior to making a decision of where they would like to attend their high school and if they would like to take advantage of one of our career and technical education pathway. Um, again, my name is Bruno Pomerano. Uh, I am the Director of Career and Technical Education. And today, um, Sue Centaur and Nick Lisi, who will also introduce themselves, are CTE coordinators in the district. Um, a lot of information to share and parents, families, um, guardians, anyone who's on the call, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us with any questions. We wanna make sure that you are as comfortable as you possibly can be while making a decision uh, about your child's future. Or if your child has a question, he or she is more than welcome to reach out to us as well. So Ms. Centaur, if you wanna take it away. Uh, thank you. So thank you, um, Director Permarano. So I'm Susan Centaur and Nick Lisi will be uh, popping in here in a couple minutes uh, when we will be sharing this presentation. Um, and I wanna reiterate the thanks to parent engagement and also the, the reaching out. And, and there'll be lots of opportunities later um, as well as throughout the fall and in coming spring to, to reach out to any of us for any questions that you might have to anything we can do, we got a, We have a lot of information and, uh, and it can be overwhelming, I think, to some families. So um, feel free to ask us and we're happy to, to answer any questions. But in the interest of time, we will get going. Thank you all for being here on an incredibly beautiful day. Um, I totally appreciate that. Okay, so right now we have um, our, our technical, our career technical education programs in the Syracuse City School District. We are up to 27 different programs. Um, they are offered at all of the different high schools. Um, they, they follow a model of the incoming students are in ninth grade and they stay with the program through 12th grade, which is kind of different than you might have heard of with the BOCES model. Um, many of them are, have college credits attached to them. Some of them have associate's degrees attached to them. They all um, allow students within those programs to earn stackable, we call them stackable credentials. Um, and I think that these programs are very, very strong. We're gonna talk about how we get, how we create the, these programs. And 
they are really some really fantastic opportunities for your future for students to take advantage of. Um, we had middle school, we started to do some CTE work in the middle school in the fall of last year. We did a little pilot program and this year we've rolled it out <clears throat> in sixth grade um, to all of the middle schools in the district, um, which is a year, which our original plan was to do it this year and then COVID back and forth. And now we're, we're back and we're into it. So it's, we're very excited. And I hope that some of your middle school students are getting to have some opportunities to see some of that in the middle schools. So you can see, we're just giving you a little glimpse of what, what the CTE programs, how they have, when they started and how we have grown um, over the course of the last seven years. You can see we had we, pretty small numbers to start with with only four programs. And we don't have 2020 and 21 in here, but I'm telling you that the, the programs are growing and we're, we're having more and more students um, working with us and, and choosing these different pathways. Uh, and I think it's, it's a great, great opportunities and the students are really learning a lot and allowing themselves to have some wide open opportunities when they leave our programs. So this is a list, a little laundry list of all the different programs. Um, you can see that some of them are, are the kind of standard ones that we might have had when we were all younger, like culinary arts or cosmetology, but there's some that are very, very new. Um, EMT, we, we have students leaving um, after four years in high school and they can be certified EMTs. Um, th there are some tremendous opportunities in forensic science, computer forensics, you can see all these different things. Some of them are very high tech, that geospatial technology, there's uh, students who come out of there and they can use that software and that the skills they've learned, they can use it in a variety of different areas. It really, it allows them to have so many opportunities going forward. And you can see to the right, all the different P-TECH programs that we have, um, and those are all those the, the uh, early college high school programs that have associates degrees attached right to them um, so that when students come in ninth grade, they have the opportunity to stay through senior year and then through year five and year six, as we refer to them, to get their associates degree, which is another tremendous opportunity. So hello, everybody. I'm going to take over here for just a minute. My name is Nick Lisi. I work with Sue and um, Director Permarano in the Career and Tech Ed office at Syracuse. So it's nice to see everyone. And I'm going to start off by expanding uh, just a little bit on the P-TECH programs, because there is a lot of information that is special about the six programs that are aligned with a P-TECH grant. And that's essentially what it is. It's funding from New York State for those six programs to expand them with additional um, opportunities than some of our other uh, career and tech ed programs that we offer. Those six career areas are high demand areas. Uh, in other words, in those, those areas where students are going to get training in P-TECH programs are very much in high demand right now for employees or in the next five years, there will be a great need for employees in those areas. So that's why they have this additional funding. Um, and what comes along with that? It's really, um, it's really great stuff. So it's, uh, it starts off with helping us develop a partnership. So the Syracuse City School District partners with a community college and a business partner to offer um, work-based learning opportunities at the business and college credits um, towards a, and to earn a, an associate's degree from that community college. And it's all paid for. It's all funded through the grant. Um, so when a student is enrolled in a P-TECH program, they start off in ninth grade all the way through 12th and beyond if needed. So a little different than our nine through 12 model for our other programs because students can choose to stay with the program. It'll continue to be funded and they can earn their associate's degree. Um, in addition to that, there are those those work-based learning opportunities that I talked about. And that means that again, starting in ninth grade, students begin to work with professionals in their career area. So they start to develop relationships with them. They start to learn about the businesses and the job opportunities that would be available for them as they work through. And then during school, during high school, they're earning college credits. Those college classes and credits that they're earning will satisfy high school credits. Mm -hmm. So in many cases in P-TECH programs, our students, by the time they finish 12th grade, have completed more than half of their associate's degree. 
So many of our students who stay with PTAC only need an additional year to earn their associate's degree. Um, some need more and that's okay. Um, but uh, they, they, so they can take, uh, they, they can take their time. The, one of the most important things about a PTEC program is the support that students get throughout the entire program. So 9th through 12th and beyond, those additional two years, they're getting the same supports and more than any high school student would get. Uh, so Mr. Lisi, we can't hear you. I think he's frozen. Oh dear. <laughs> Let me go back. So I just think that um, um, I'm gonna go forward with uh, the partnerships. So we talked a little bit, I might actually, let me go back because um, I do wanna mention that there is no cost to the parent or the guardian or to the student. And um, the support, as Nick mentioned, is really, really important. So we'll move forward. So the partnerships um, that we have with all of our local businesses and industries is really, really important and a big piece of what we do in, in CTE. Um, the business and community partnerships, the, the description of what Nick talked about in PTEC, um, allowing the businesses to be part of what is happening in school is we've modeled that and we've tried to use that in all of our CTE programs because we've seen how valuable it is and how important it is for students to understand what comes after um, high school and how what they're learning in their programs right now um, are are valuable and connected and relatable, right? It's relevant what they're learning in um, high school is relevant to what they're gonna be doing in, a, in the job down the road. Um, the partnerships we have with local business and industries, you, you, we talked about the PTEC for a second, that they're, they're very kind of more formal <clears throat> partners, but all of the, um, every CTE program has an advisory council, <clears throat> excuse me, that is, um, includes, uh, business and industry professionals within that discipline. Um, they help us figure out, you know, we're going to talk about curriculum. They help us advise on curriculum. They tell us what assessments might students should be more appropriate to take, uh, what kind of credentials we should be looking for, what things are valuable to the, um, to the economy and, and to the local areas. Um, they also work as volunteers, as, as career coaches and mentors. Mr. Lisi, can you, are you back? Yes, I am. I'm so sorry okay. about that. No problem. Uh, so I'll, I'll come back on. Sorry, everybody. No so problem. to pick up where Ms. Centaur left off, uh, the volunteering or opportunities that we create for, um, for business uh, professionals is really important to our programs. We set them up for our students starting in ninth grade to begin to develop relationships and begin to practice the skills of working with adults, skills that they're gonna to need to be successful in college and career. We do them multiple times. It's very important for our students to have a chance to practice. We gotta give them multiple chances. So again, we do them for our PTEC programs monthly, for our other CTE programs, um, every marking period, but it's a steady drumbeat of opportunities. By the time students are in 11th grade, they have now had multiple chances to practice these skills. They've developed relationships with business professionals, and that's where the internships and job shadows come in. Now businesses are asking our students to come and spend time with them. They want our students to be a part of their business. They, they see them as their next employees. Um, and it's this, these opportunities that we give students to work with professionals in these early grades that prepares them to be successful and again, prepared for internships and shadowing opportunities. And it really comes down to these career ready practices that are embedded in all of our programs. Uh, and we're gonna talk and we've got a slide on these and we'll expand on them, but they're really, they are the things, the skills that every business tells us that every employee needs. The stuff that is beyond time, uh, um, you know, be interested in what you're doing be a, a, a positive role model, all of those things. We stress that starting in ninth grade. Move on to the next slide, Ms. Centaur. We have partnerships with colleges for every single program. 
Um, in, in all of our CTE programs, students have opportunities to, to earn college credits. They, they, in, in the P-TECH programs, they start early, ninth and 10th grade. Some of our career tech ed programs, they might not start until 11th grade or 12th grade, but students have opportunities to, look, to earn college credits. Those credits are gonna transfer to the college of their choice once they, once they graduate and, and move on. We listed a few here. OCC, clearly one of our best, biggest um, um, uh, post-secondary partners, SUNY Broome, Mohawk Valley Community College. We didn't even list Syracuse University or Lemoyne College. I'll just share one very quick thing that we did with Syracuse University this summer. We piloted a summer internship program for CTE students where our students that are going into 12th grade, so they finished 11th grade, they were able to work at Syracuse University for pay for the department that aligns with their CTE program. So for instance, we had four welding technology students from Corcoran that worked for the welding shop at Syracuse University all summer for pay. They were begging them to come back. This, the, it, and we did the same thing for construction. We did the same thing for culinary. We did the same thing for media. There were multiple departments that we had students work uh, internship with. It was so successful that the university wants us to double the amount of placements and we're creating a program for our seniors this spring. Um, Lemoyne College's Erie 21 program, we're now aligned with them. And, and again, in all of these cases, students are not only getting their career experience, but they're earning college credits and they're, er, they're, they're getting experience at college. And the industry recognized credentials, Ms. Centro talked about those a little bit ago. Those are our credentials that are recognized by industry. So students are doing and earning real credentials. And what I mean by that is credentials that when they're on their resume or an employer sees that they have them or a college sees that they have them, they are recognized. They are meaningful credentials and stackable. So in other words, credentials that may you know, build on each other and may be able to be recognized in multiple career areas. Go on to the next one. Thanks, Ms. Centaur. And here's those career ready practices. So these are national standards. These are not things that we made up, although we love them, and they're very important for our students to uh, to to um, to show mastery in. But they're national credentials. Uh, there are 42 uh, states around the country that recognize these uh, career ready practices, uh, and all of our teachers align their lessons and curriculums with these standards. And, and in many cases, our businesses are saying, these are the most important things. So you can, you know, quickly sort of scan over and see, you know, what these are. These are things, and these are things like communicate. These are things like being able to critically think and be creative and, um, and be responsible and, and a contributing citizen. So all of these things that we know are, are important, we make it necessary and important to get our, to have our students be able to practice these. We, we create opportunities for students to be able to do these in class. You can go on to the next one, Sue. Okay. So the the CTE programs, the question might be coming up in your head, like how do we figure out what, what are we going to teach these students? We know that those career ready practices are a piece of that. And I don't know if you noticed it um, on next slide, the Common Career Technical Corps, that's a, a consortium of those 42 states, and they've come up with specific standards for each discipline. So you're looking at the P-TECH mechanical, um, and there's very specific standards that they say that students should have when they leave. They should be able to know and do specific things. And we've included those, certainly, when we go to develop curriculum. Um, and we also have, um, teachers that are experts in the area, and they help us when, when we're deciding what kind of curriculum, what exactly students need to know and be able to do. Um, and we also uh, get a lot of information from our, our um, business and, and, and higher ed partners. Because in a perfect world, what we want to do is we want to have programs that meet the needs of those, those companies in the local area so we want to be able to support those companies, right? So our kids can get easily get jobs. We want them, the students to be able to easily transition to a higher ed opportunity so that they can just build on all the strengths that they are gaining in the career and technical education programs. So the content of all the curriculum is aligned to industry standards. It incorporates those very, very important career ready practices. 
and it offers the students an opportunity to earn those national credentials. And the whole point of this is it's very deliberate, right? We're not just thinking that, oh, this might be a good idea. We are very deliberate and there are steps that we go through to make sure that all of the programs have the highest curriculum and the, the best standards the most appropriate content for students when they leave here. And one of the things we talked a little bit about those advisory councils, those are people that are business leaders that come and look at our curriculum twice a year to make sure that we're still doing what we should be doing. And are there, did there something change? Are there new equipment that kids need to know how to be able to use? Anything that there's new that we need to address because we wanna make sure our students are very ready to be prepared to be successful at the next level, no matter where it is, whether it's college or um, if it's right directly into industry. So CTE teachers, as you might imagine, there's not a lot of people that um, are, go to school to be a cybersecurity teacher. So very often when we um, come up with an idea that, okay, we need to meet a need in the industry, in the, in the area, we need to meet a need in cybersecurity. We have to go find somebody who's an expert in cybersecurity and recruit them to become a teacher. Um, sometimes it's difficult because there's a lot of people that can that can do different things in the private sector and they and they have to be able to love being a teacher. Um, but we have great relationships with our industry partners um, and higher education partners too. We have a great relationship with Utica College for our cyber and our computer forensics and and very often we go to them. They are part of our advisory council too. Um, you can see where this partnership where we're all working together right very collaboratively to make sure we have the best programming. Um, they're really great sources, There's our business and industries and our um, higher ed partners. It's really important that we talk to the state education department because we want our teachers to be able to, to come in and also be certified by the state um, so that we can have uh, part of the, our programming has to be that we have certified teachers. Otherwise, the state won't allow us to have specific programs. Um, we have to make sure that the teachers who come, there were cybersecurity experts on Thursday, and then two weeks later, when they're in a classroom with students, they need to, we need to provide them the professional development to be the most effective teacher that they can be. And we need to do that so that because we want our kids to be the best and have the best possible um, experiences and knowledge and behaviors when they're all done. So it's, it's very cohesive. We have to all work together. Um, and we've, the district has committed to getting um, this SREB training. Um, these are people that are experts in, in helping people become from profession, the professional world into becoming public school teachers. And it's, it incorporates some classwork, it incorporates some coaching. They, um, they actually come in and observe them in the classroom and our teachers have the ability to go back and forth and talk to them and talk to other teachers that are in their same cohort and allow them to have a, uh, some a uh, bouncing back of information and making sure that they're if they have an issue they can get response and a question and answer and and further coaching to become better at what they're doing so at the end of all of this our career and technical education conclusions um, the data tells us that students enrolled in the pathways have all of these things and we we've seen this that the data universally tells us this, but we also in our own district, um, we look at data every year to determine how our kids are doing. And we've seen the increased engagement. We've seen better attendance. We've seen the higher graduation rates, and we've seen that the kids are more college and, and career ready. So even though th that the world is telling us that this is what's happening with you have students exposed to CTE pathways, we've seen it in our own little world in, in central New York and the city school district. The national trends, we, we, we agree with them. So in summary, we have 27 different pathways throughout five different high school buildings. We have very strong partnerships with business and higher education and more students as a result of this collaboration um, is there more students are graduating and more students are graduating college and career ready. So these students, when you, if, if you, I wish that everybody could see the growth of these students as they go through high school, the more opportunities that they have to take a college class, the more opportunities they have to use that work-based learning, these students are really, really strong when they leave.
Mr. Lee. So I, 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 I would like to invite everyone to please uh, go on to our website, the district's website, onto the CTE page. Very easy to find. Um, the directions are right there. Just uh, from the home page, hover over the word departments and select CTE, and there's all the information. And there's there's a ton of information there. Um, as you scroll down the page, at the very bottom, there are uh, uh, information for each individual program. You can look at the curriculum. There's an information card. There is a short video by the teacher talking about the program. And there's also now a just a short uh, video tour of the classroom or the lab. So students and parents can really get a, a great idea of, um, about, uh, about the program uh, and also meet the teacher. We're hoping, fingers crossed, that at some point we can invite folks into the high schools to, to come and, and see. We're hoping for the, career, the CTE fair where students can come and, and meet the teachers. But uh, all this information is on the district website right now, the CTE page right now. Um, and there's also a PowerPoint that is uh, that you can scroll through or students can go through. And there's a little bit more detailed information about each program um, on the website. So there's a lot there. Um, and Ms. Center, if you want to go on to the next uh, slide, we have even more um, sessions that are coming up that students can uh, and parents can, can attend. We're going to redo this session on Thursday during the day. Uh, and I think some of the middle schools might even be uh, having the students watch it in school, but uh, anyone can jump back onto that. So you can register for that one. Then the 21st in the evening, we're gonna do a special one on P-TECH because uh, that, those programs, um, they're just hard to kind of get your hands around, but we're gonna invite uh, someone from OCC and one of our graduates on that one. And then you can see the other ones that are coming up that are more uh, geared towards uh, registering how to prepare for the interviews. Go on to the next one, Sue. So here's our, our email address. You can send questions if you would like to that email address and one of us will get back to you as quickly as we can. Um, and I think we're going to um, uh, open it up to questions if anyone's having any questions. I don't see any questions at this time in the chat. Um, does anybody see? any hands raised no i don't see any questions uh they are opening it up for questions are there any questions you oh, all did such a, a thorough hand. job <laughs> we have a hand raised rhonda bessie uh, all right and rhonda i did ask for you to unmute so Hi, good evening. It's v VC, Rhonda VC. I'm sorry. That's no, no problem. I'm sorry, I didn't hear where the school CTE is located. The, I, can, I can jump in and try to answer that. So the, the CTE programs are offered throughout the five high schools. So um, there are different programs offered at different high schools. Um, and in, in that information is listed. Is there any particular program you're interested in? And we can tell you what high school what high school it's offered at, if that would be helpful. Would there be um, like engineering type program? Yeah, yep, I can and, jump in. Yep. And within the engineering, I mean, are we still helping students that are under special education if they were to take engineering? Bruno, do you want to take that one? Okay, there you go. Can you are you unmuted? Yep. Thank you. you Sorry. <laughs> I yeah. think I was talking a little bit to myself. I apologize for that. Uh, Miss VC, thank you for that question. Um, it, absolutely. Um, we the CTE pathways are all, are offered to and eligible to all of our students, regardless of what needs they may have, whether they have a 504, an IEP, English language learners. Um, we, we try to accommodate as best we can within our CTE pathways and within their general education setting as well. So whatever an IEP says, that's what we follow. Um, one of the biggest 
and and Mr. Lisi and Ms. Centaur touched on this a little bit, but one of, and, and this is one of our later sessions about interviewing for um, our CTE pathways. We want to make sure that you as families are comfortable sending your children to our CTE pathways. So we want to make sure that you know everything you possibly can about the pathways, but we also want to make sure that your children want to be part of our pathways. So it's really important that the kids have an active interest in the pathway that they're choosing. Um, the way that Nick, Sue, and I see our programs is this is really a hook to get kids involved in their education, want to stay in education, complete high school, and move beyond. Have all those opportunities, like Nick and Sue mentioned, whether it's going to college, a two-year or four-year school afterwards, going right into the workforce, or doing both at the same time, working and going to college. We want to make sure that we provide them with those transferable skills um, so that they can be successful after they leave the Syracuse City School District. And that's for all of our kids. Again, regardless of what their background is, if they have an IEP, if they don't, if they're ENL, anything. That that's excellent. That's thank you for that answer. Within the program, are they earning college credit? So all of our all of our pathways are a little bit different. All of them. So for I, I want to say for almost all of our pathways, and Sue and Nick, please jump in for. Almost all of our pathways offer some sort of college credit, yep. whether they are concurrent enrollment credits where students are taking them in the high school, being taught by a teacher who has been certified by a college, or whether we send them out to OCC. Um, we, have, we have many seniors and juniors who get on a bus in the morning when they get to school, go up to OCC, take a few classes, and then come back to campus, to our campus. Um, so there, there's a lot of opportunities. And Mr. Lisi had talked about like the stackable credentials earlier. So in addition to our college credits that they're earning, the high school credits that they're earning, they're also earning business and industry standard recognized credits of some sort, whether it's a certification or it's just a credential that they're getting. That sounds, that's a good answer. My last question is within these programs and the curriculums that they're choosing at all the schools for CST, I think that's the acronyms. Is there or will there be anywhere within the programs a, an opportunity for the students to learn how to take studious notes? classroom notes, whiteboard notes, will, I haven't seen this yet. My child is in eighth grade. Are, are we going to help them learn how to pick out or identify what is important in note taking, especially when you get to college level, that's pretty key to your ability to learn how to study pass your tests, refer back to your notes. Right now, it's, it's a big question for me because without knowing what to take down from what your teacher is citing, how can you come back home and study for a test the next day if you don't have the most important information to study from? So Ms. Fassi, that's, a, that's another phenomenal question question that really uh, speaks to um, education as a whole. And one of our strategic priorities in the Syracuse City School District is personalized learning, which is something that all of our buildings, not just in CTE pathways, not just in the high schools, uh, but within our middle schools and elementary schools, where we're really trying to focus on our students, learning about how, what the best way for them to learn is. And depending on the schools and their initi initiatives, Ms. Fassi, I, I'm a former middle school principal, and one initiative that I had in my middle school, and every school is a little different, is AVID. And one of the AVID processes would be this note-taking process, right? Really keen in on what, um, what, how a student learns best and he or she being given a number of different ways to interpret like note-taking, for instance. Um, as far as our CTE pathways and our college courses, Mr. Lisi Centaur had mentioned it before. What, one thing we're really, really proud of outside of our work-based learning opportunities with our business and industry partners, 
is the partnership we have with higher education and the support system we have built around that. Um, when our students go up on campus, a bus takes them from, let's say, Henniger up to OCC. It's not like they get off the bus and we're like, okay, see you in a couple hours, come back. There is someone at OCC that is a district employee up there as a resource for our kids in particular to help them navigate this because whether they're 16, 17, 18 years old, they're still children. They're still kids. Um, mm -hmm. So we have support system embedded and built in with everything that we do um, moving on to college, higher ed, and whatnot. Mr. Lisi had mentioned, um, he talked about our P-TECH pathways, which are basically six-year pathways. And I know it sounds a little confusing, but if you come to the P-TECH meeting, Mr. Lisi and Ms. Centaur definitely clarify that. But for all six years, they get extra supports. They get more supports than if a child were to just graduate from high school and go on to college on his or her own would get. Um, so we try to emulate that during the whole process of the four years that they're with us during our CTE pathways in the high schools, whether it's PTAC or not. So in short, we do give them a number of different resources um, to use and a number of different opportunities to, to get help to make sure that their time spent, not just at the high schools, but also while they're taking concurrent enrollment classes or classes on campus is the time best spent. I just say thank you to Ms. Vesey um, for all of her questions. Um, uh, we do have a couple other hands raised and some questions in the chat. Um, the information to get a hold of them, if you have further questions, is also in the chat. But I want to go ahead and give the opportunity to Megan. I'm going ahead and unmute you. Hi, thank you. Um, my question is regarding um, the STEAM school. So I guess, first of all, is that still slated to open? in the fall of 2023. And then as it relates also to these CTE programs, what's listed on the district website right now, seems like some of those programs overlap with the CTE listing. Um, so I was curious what the plan is there. Is that to move, physically move some of those programs to the STEAM school? And um, as I think about, I have an eighth grader, as we think about what to do next year, um, if students applied for a CTE program, uh, would they then have the opportunity to also apply to the STEAM school when that opens? That question makes sense. It does, and I'm gonna do the best, I'm gonna answer your question to the best of my ability. Um, so we are still moving forward as a CTE team um, with the ambition of the STEAM school opening up in 23-24. Um, the way that it is proposed for the STEAM school to open up, so unfortunately for your eighth grader, is we are scaffolding up. So we're starting with a ninth grade class hopefully in 23, 24, then in 24, 25, it would be ninth and 10th, 25, 26, 9, 10, 11, and 26, 27, 9, 11, 9 10, 11, and 12. Um, so it won't be opened as a full school all four years at once. As far as your question regarding our CTE pathways that have been proposed, um, like Mr. Lisi and Ms. Centaur had talked about during the presentation, a number of our pathways, all of our pathways come out of need and come out of the need within our community, Central New York area, and how best we can support that need. Those will be, those will be four ideally distinct pathways in addition to the 27 pathways um, the 27 pathways that we already offer. There may seem like there's a little bit of overlap. Like for instance, one of the proposed pathways for the STEAM school is construction management. And right now we have a construction technology pathway at Nottingham. Those will be two entirely different pathways. Will there be overlap? Yes, there will be overlap, but they will be two different pathways. Another pathway that seems like there will be the overlap with is our data analytics pathway for the STEAM school and our RPAS drone program that we house at PSLA at Fowler. Um, will there be some overlap? Sure will, but those are two entirely different pathways moving forward. Um, again, uh, there's 
I, I wish I could give everybody a guarantee 23, 24, the STEAM school is going to open and we're going to be a go. Um, as a as a CTE team, Mr. Lisi, Ms. Centaur and I, um, we are helping to develop those curriculums, which we're moving full steam ahead, trying to develop those curriculums. But as far as the entire structure, the building, the facility, all of that, um, that's beyond us, unfortunately. So we are still, we're moving ahead as if 23, 24 is the date. Um, I can't give you a, an absolute guarantee on that. I hope that that answered the majority of your question. Thank you so much. Uh, we have another question in the chat. It says, how often does a student get into their first choice of program? It's a great question. And Nick and Sue, again, if you wanna unmute and jump in, please feel free to do that. Um, with, with our pathways, most of our pathways are capped and they're capped anywhere between uh, 26 and 28, 28 seats within the pathways. Now we have 27 different pathways. So that's a lot of seats that go about. And when students really are given um, all the information on are able to make an educated choice along with you, their family members on what direction they want to go. Um, there are, I don't want to tell you that kids get locked out of programs because they absolutely do. There are a few pathways that are notoriously um, a lottery pathway. That means we have more students who apply than we have seats available. Our cosmetology pathway always has more students who apply to it than seats. Our culinary pathway always has more students than it does seats. And our media pathway normally has more students who apply than we have seats. So for those pathways, we normally have to have a lottery that goes along with it. So we put students in the lottery, hoping that they'll get their first choice, but that's why we've normally given at least two choices, a first choice and a second choice to students. Um, and if students, what, what we like to recommend, Mr. Lisi, Ms. Centaur, and myself, is that as a, knowing going into this process, know that cosmetology, culinary, and media are three pathways that really fill up every year and always go to lottery. Hopefully those aren't your top three pathways. Hopefully if one of them is fantastic, but hopefully one of the other 24 pathways really interests you. So that's your second choice. So that can almost guarantee that you're going to get into one of those top two. Now, mm -hmm families, I want to be completely honest with everybody. I hope that between Mr. S Mr. Lisi, Ms. Centaur, and myself, and the Office of Family Engagement, that we have such an interest in this that every one of our pathways is going to be lottery. Um, our pathways are fantastic. They offer awesome opportunities for our kids and for, the for you as family members and the greater Syracuse community. Um, that's our ultimate goal is that everyone needs to have a lottery. But right now with the number of students we have moving from eighth to ninth grade and past precedent with interest, if more likely than not, and, and Sue and Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, we had very few students who didn't get their first or second choice, if any at all correct this past no, year no this this past i can't i don't think i know the exact numbers but um i know that it was it's it's not a large number um and there's a question about with students being able to move around there isn't a lot of moving around once they get established in a program but we know that in ninth grade occasionally a student gets into a program and then they decide that that's maybe not a good fit so we try to work really hard to help those ninth graders to make sure they're where they need to be but we've also done a really big push to get information into the middle schools because our goal is to make sure that students have as much information about what these programs are all about what kind of things do they do what it what it you know what are they all about really unravel it a little bit for students so they can decide you know what i really am not crazy about culinary but this whole tinkering and manufacturing thing that sounds cool like i'd like that so the goal is to have as much information and I think with this year, beginning in middle school this year, the kids are gonna have more information as they move forward. And, and the further along we go next year at this time, they'll even have more information. So between this kind of information that we're trying to get out to you and their uh, middle school counselors are really valuable resources for information, as well as what they're being taught in the, their CTE programs in the middle school, as well as you guys can always reach out to us. But our goal is to try to get students in the right paths as early as we can. Okay, so, so there's a 
Two part is all of this during the school hours and is there CTE tutoring? There, there is all of the all of this encompasses a normal school day. It's embedded within our normal school day. And Sue and Nick, again, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, traditionally, our pathways, regardless of what the pathway is, we have one or two outliers. But for the for the most part, our pathways are four year pathway, just like Sue had mentioned very early on in the uh, presentation. They take their CTE 100 level, which is one period, 200 level, which is one period. Then when they get to their 300 level course during their junior year, it's normally a double period and their 400 level during their senior year is normally a double period as well. And those are all if we, we stay on top of our CTE kids, our graduation rate is higher than non-CTE kids. Our attendance rate is higher than non-CTE kids. Um, we try to build as many connections as we possibly can to ensure that when they get to junior and senior year, they have the room in their schedule for that double period CTE pathway so that they can complete their CTE endorsement by the end of their senior year, have that credential on their diploma, but more importantly, have have any kind of certification, stackable credentials, college courses, anything like that uh, moving forward. Um, what Mr. Lisi, Ms. Centaur, and I work with our CTE teachers uh, about is also offer building the connections with their kids and with you, the family members. So that way we can do um, if we need to do any kind of like marking period recovery or credit recovery or extra help or tutoring, um, Ms. Centaur had mentioned it. These are very, very specific pathways. We have one cybersecurity teacher in our entire district. So there is he or she has to be ready and willing to work with all of his or her scholars so that they can get everything out of it that they possibly can. So we really try to push and reinforce our teachers to build those connections and those relationships with their kids. Mr. P, I'll, I'll just jump in for just a, a couple of things just to, to enlighten folks. The PTEC programs do require summer programs. So that, that's something that we'll just to kind of keep in the back of your mind. It's an awesome program. It's generally a week long. Um, and so if, if a student's in a PTEC program, there is, um, there's, there's that, but it's, it's really fun. And the other thing, again, for students that are taking college classes on the campus, they are required to go to school when the college is in session. So the students that are taking classes on a college campus are following kind of two schedules. They're following the Syracuse City schedule as well as the college schedule. So there is a little overlap there where students are required to go to college classes when the Syracuse City School District is not in session. So just to kind of get that out there as you're thinking, so you're not surprised. Okay. And then for the question who maybe they're thinking, how can you get all that college class and all of that in one school day, um, it's challenging, but it's doable. So these kids get a lot. They are busy, busy kids when they're in those uh, taking those uh, college courses up on campus, but they come back to school and they make up the work that they need to and it, it all works. And in many cases, the classes that they're taking on the college campus replaces a class that they would be taking in the high school. So for an example, our seniors that are at the college campus are taking English college level English. So they're not taking English 12 because that is satisfying that English credit from the high school. So there's some of that uh, that opens up opportunities in, in the students' schedules. And one of the reasons uh, that our seniors uh, have two periods of career and tech ed in 11th and 12th grade, that opens up opportunities for students to work with business professionals. As seniors, we try our best to have students be able to go to businesses and do some job shadows. And so they're not missing class. They're using their career and tech ed class time to get that experience, that work-based learning experience. So there's a question that says, can you say something more about four-year college prep? Is there opportunities for taking college level courses? But before you do that, I just want to be mindful that the time is 648, okay? Um, that I can answer that the college um, there. Are, so we know that the PTEC, there's college definitely embedded in that. It's part of that program. Um, and the other, there are, there are other strands, other programs that 
there are kids that are taking college level classes up on campus as well. Some programs over at Henniger, those kids are taking health, health professions. They're taking English and anatomy and physiology, which is a really challenging class, but they're doing it up on campus with lots and lots of support. There's, uh, there's embedded tutors within their class. There's a uh, support class time afterwards that they work with. There are students in, at Corcoran in the urban teacher program that is not a P-TECH, but those students are also on campus taking college level classes. Um, if they're gonna end up being teachers, we know that they're gonna need to go to college. Um, so those are the kinds of things that are available. There are other courses that the, that the high school teacher has been certified by the college to, to teach a college level course within the high school setting. Those are called concurrent enrollment. And in um, more than a handful um, of courses that that's happening as well. So there's lots, I mean, even in, in the culinary program, those students who get a specific certification that translates right to some college level classes up at OCC. If you're in the EMT program, for example, and you pass the EMT, that automatically transfers to so many classes up at OCC as well. So I hope I answered that question. So I just wanna go back and make sure that uh, Mr. Winchell's question was answered. I know you all were talking around it. And um, if we didn't answer your question, if you could just raise your hand, I don't want anyone to be overlooked. We have, um, while I'm waiting for that, we have another question you need, I think 22 credits to graduate. So these kids will be obtaining those credits along with everything they need to do for CT and PTEC. Yes. So it, it, for, for most of us, well, I'll speak on behalf of myself. When I went to high school about 48 years ago, um, I was offered elective credits, right? So think of the electives that you took when you were in high school, rather than taking electives. And when we talk about personalized learning for our kids and thinking about that as part of our, our district strategic plan, this is as personalized learning as you can get. Our kids are making the choice that I want to do this. I want to be part of drones and remote piloting. I want to be a part of cybersecurity or geospatial design or, or, uh, electrical trades, because this is what I want to do. They're making the choice. So they're basically choosing, these are the electives I'm going to take. So rather than taking a traditional high school elective, their electives are replaced with their CTE classes. So that allows their schedule to have enough room for those general education credits that they need in math, English, science, social studies, PE, art, music, health, and they have their CTE classes in order to give them those endorsements as well. Embedded within that, because the Syracuse City School District offers such a plethora of opportunities of courses like Mr. Lisi and Ms. Centaur were talking about, whether it's concurrent enrollment or a SUPA class or an AP class, those courses take the place of a high school class. So if you're taking a SUPA English class, for instance, your senior year, that class replaces English 12. So you need an English 12 credit, but SUPA, when you're taking in SUPA English in your 12th grade year, you're earning Syracuse University credits and you're earning your high school credit that you need. Um, there, there are SUPA classes for all sorts, all of our um, all of our general ed or our common branch or our core subject areas, along with AP courses. And then a number of our buildings have concurrent enrollment um, with a number of different other colleges like MBCC, like Nick was talking about earlier, ESF, Syracuse University, Lemoyne College. Um, so students in our CTE pathways, they're not locked out of those. This is in addition to everything else that a building offers. And I just want to clarify too that I think sometimes it's it's confusing. All of the students that are going through a CTE pathway are going a Regents pathway. So all those students are going to a Regents pathway, just like you would if on a regular traditional high school pathway, you know, a, a traditional college prep, whatever. Um, they're you're going to be taking that traditional Regents pathway, and then like Mr. Permano said, you're going to kind of scrunch all your electives into so that it allows you to take those CTE courses. So uh, there is a, a concern in the chat. It says, is there going to be extra academic and just general support for these students? As an adult, I feel overwhelmed, overwhelmed hearing all of this information. It, it is overwhelming. There is a lot. There is a lot to it. But again, I, I can't stress this enough because as adults, um, 
I believe that this is how it works for us too. Um, I have an active interest in education and I've devoted my life to being an educator, whether it was a teacher, an administrator, now I'm the director of career and technical education because this is what I enjoy doing. And I love working with students, with staff members, with families. This is what CTE offers our kids, an opportunity to get involved in something that they love to do and the choice to get involved with that. And so when, when you love to do something, and Mr. Lisi and Ms. Centaur had mentioned this before, there is a lot. Sometimes it, it, it is difficult. They are taking college classes earlier. Um, in our health professions programs at Henniger, um, they are earning a college credit in their ninth grade year. 10th grade, they're taking a full college course. When they're 10th graders, they're only 15 years old and they're already taking college course. Of course, we support them. We do everything we possibly can to give them those academic supports, especially when we're giving them rigorous material to, look, to learn and to try to earn those credits. Um, but there's a lot to be said. I, our kids are, are resilient. And they can do when the bar is set high, they manage to reach that bar. Um, and so we want to try to just make sure that if they need that little extra boost, that we give them that boost so that they can make they can reach the height that they want to reach. Uh, but we've had a tremendous amount of success of offering more rigorous programming to our kids. And they're still kids. If they make a mistake, we're here to catch them. That's our job is to make sure that they're going to be successful. And, and, and Sue, so, I don't know if you want to add. Go ahead, Nick. Just, yeah, I do, I do, because you're hitting on something that's really important, uh, Mr. Permarano. And, and what, what we see develop and, and, and is students, they, they create this family. And, and at ITC, students in programs, they are so into it. They are after school tinkering. They are just with each other. It, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's awesome to see this and they, and they support each other. And, um, and the teachers are there to support them too. These programs, students are together for four years. They, they work through these programs together. There's no real other program in high school where students are taking the same classes all the way through all four years. So it's really this great, and I'll use the term because students use that this family that develops um, and with this common interest that students have. And as Mr. Permarano said, we've seen students that really have come from, uh, you know, have just risen um, through the program, not only academically, not only in their, their career skills or their technical skills, but just them as people. And it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful, uh, it's really a wonderful thing. I really appreciate everyone. Um, I don't want to cut anyone off. I do want to make sure that if anyone has questions, if you all can put your information in the chat so that way um, we don't leave anyone feeling like before Thursday that I didn't get something answered. So that way they might can reach out to you or how they might get their uh, questions answered, okay? Thank you so much for that, Bruno. I, I just wanted to add that, um, you know, the uh, students who um, kind of find their tribe, as Mr. Lisi said, I, I talked to a student one time and they were talking about a different program. And as he, as we were chatting, he was talking about how much he likes to be outside and he likes to, you know, be in nature and work in the streams. And we have a natural resources program at Nottingham. When I described it to him, he was like, oh, I would love that. So I think the other piece of you know, this is a lot for students to take, but if they love it, yeah. they love it. And it makes it a lot easier to take a class that they're excited about and they love the teacher and they love their, you know, their family that they have at school. It goes a long way to helping them get through a lot. Well, I appreciate it. It has been a wealth of information that has been supplied here this evening. Um, again, I'm hoping everybody got the information that was in the chat. If you had other questions, we will be back here on Thursday at noon. We look forward to you joining us or having told someone that we'll be back here on noon at noon on Thursday. Um, we look forward to being able to share more information with our families. At this time, Chief Wright Williams, did you have anything you'd like to share? I think she might be on a different call. <laughs> we have two Zooms going on tonight. 
Oh, she says it's unstable. <laughs> okay. So um, I want to say thank you to our presenters. Um, you all were fabulous. Thank you for all of the information you gave um, given on this evening. Um, we'll be back here on Thursday. And anybody looking for the link, it will be sent out to you. Um, thank you. And wait, I got to. Oh, you're clapping. Miss Natalia, you're clapping. Okay, yay. Uh, we did get a lot of thank yous. I hope you all saw that. We got a lot of thank yous in the um, chat to you all. Um, so if there is nothing else uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and end the chat. Thank you. Have a good thank night, you. everybody. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Make sure you can stop recording, please.